Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Out of all of the famous members of Eurasia's Pleistocene Ice Age fauna, one impressive animal tends to be a bit overlooked in my opinion, despite its recent appearance in prehistoric planet. This is of course the mighty Elasmotherium, an enormous elephant-sized rhino that was native to the open grasslands of central Eurasia between the late Miocene and the late Pleistocene. Ranging from Eastern Europe to Northern China, this specialised grazing herbivore was a member of the familiar family Rhinocerotidae, while also belonging to the entirely extinct subfamily Elasmotherionae. These animals diverged from the common ancestor of all living rhinos between 34 and 22 million years ago, probably during the Oligocene, seeing that readily identifiable early members of this group are known from the very beginning of the Miocene. Elasmotherian started off pretty modestly, with the basal Bugti rhinus from the earliest Miocene of Pakistan being about the size of a Malayan tapir. This subfamily was united by a suite of anatomical traits that made them well suited for living in open grassland and savanna ecosystems, including relatively elongated slender limbs and high crowned molar teeth adapted for grazing. Such adaptations made elasmotherians highly successful and diverse during the Miocene a period in which warm savanna-type ecosystems could be found across much of Africa, Eurasia, and North America. Many forms possess nasal horns, while the derived Sinotherium and Elasmotherium itself instead had a large dome or boss that developed on the top of the skull roof, which is often thought to have been an attachment point for a frontal horn, with the nasal horn being absent. Elasmotherium was traditionally thought to have had an extremely large and elongated frontal horn, although no physical evidence of this has ever been found. Indeed, a 2021 study by Titov et al. argued that the cranial dome was relatively weak because it was formed from an enlargement of the nasal cavity and was largely hollow with thin outer walls. Therefore, the skull couldn't have supported an enormous horn as has often been depicted in paleo art and was instead covered with a hard keratinous pad. The researchers proposed that the large dome may have functioned to enhance the sense of smell and perhaps secondarily acted as a resonating chamber. In adult males, this may have taken the form of a short horn-like structure. Elasmotherians appear to have evolved in Asia before later spreading into Europe and Africa, with the relatively basal Chimentodon already giving rise to three species. The earliest African forms included animals such as Victoria seros, which was native to the middle Miocene of Kenya circa 15 million years ago, and possessed a prominent nasal horn. Other widespread members of the group included Hispanotherium, which was found across Eurasia between 16 and 7.5 million years ago, and was probably a mixed browser grazer, based on the microware found on its teeth, as well as Iranotherium, which was comparable to the largest modern rhinos in size, and inhabited what is now China and Iran during the late Miocene. Males almost certainly possessed large nasal horns, and were much larger than the females, indicating that they engaged in combat during the mating season. Like many of the more derived Elasmotherians, Iranotherium would have utilised its high-crowned molars to chew high-fibre grasses. Among the most derived of these animals, however, was the genus Sinotherium, a massive form that was only slightly smaller than its later close relative Elasmotherium, being larger than all modern rhinos. Dwelling in what is now Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China during the late Miocene and early Pliocene, Sinotherium represents a transitional form between earlier Elasmotherians, which often possessed nasal horns, and the derived Elasmotherium, which had a bony, boss-like protuberance on the forehead in front of the eyes. In addition, while more basal forms tended to have elongated narrow snouts, Sinotherium had a noticeably shorter muzzle, a trait that would be taken to a much greater extreme in its probable descendant genus Elasmotherium. This gradual evolutionary transition almost certainly occurred in what is now northern China about 5 million years ago, towards the end of the Miocene. Indeed, Elasmotherium was the only member of its subfamily to persist beyond the early Pliocene, with other genera in Africa and Eurasia clearly being hit hard by the cooling climatic trends that took place at this time. Like its ancestor, this was a truly massive animal, with adults estimated to have stood about 6 feet 7 inches tall at the shoulder, and weighed between 3.5 and, and 5 metric tons, which is comparable to modern Asian and African elephants. As mentioned earlier, it was once common to depict this animal with a truly enormous vertically oriented frontal horn, 
although it's now thought that Elasmotherium generally possessed a keratinized bump on the forehead, which may have been more horn-like in mature males. Unlike modern rhinos, the skull was rather brachycephalic and blunt, with the head generally being held low and close to the ground, being supported by highly robust neck vertebrae. This was an adaptation for a highly specialized grazing niche, with its molar teeth being ever-growing like those of some modern rodents in order to cope with a life spent feeding on abrasive grasses that contained a high amount of grit. The thoracic vertebrae located over the shoulders were greatly elongated, reaching up to 50 centimeters or 20 inches in length, giving Elasmotherium a somewhat humpbacked appearance. Like other members of the subfamily, its limbs were relatively long and gracile, making this animal relatively fast and agile for its size. It also lacked incisors at the front of the jaws, and would have instead utilized flexible lips to seize vegetation. It's also been suggested that Elasmotherium may have also fed on roots and other underground parts of plants such as roots and tubers, perhaps to an even greater degree than the above ground parts, using their heavily ossified snouts in combination with their powerful neck muscles to turn over soil in search of food. At present, four species are known, which could probably be considered an evolutionary sequence of one developing into the next, with these being, in chronological order, E. chaprovicum, E. pei, E. caucasicum, and E. sibiricum. Taken together, these inhabited a range that extended from what is now Ukraine to northern China, with the earliest definitive examples of the genus appearing about 2.6 million years ago. Despite being one of the quintessential Eurasian Ice Age animals, alongside the contemporary woolly mammoth and the giant deer Megaloceros, it is noteworthy that Elasmotherium did not inhabit particularly snowy environments, instead preferring the vast open grasslands of the lower mammoth steppe, where it occurred in areas that also contained meadows and forest steppe. This probably indicates that the genus possessed a hairy coat, similar to that of the smaller woolly rhino. During the Pleistocene, Elasmotherium dwelt alongside the steppe mammoth, Mammuthus trogontherii, the steppe bison, Bison priscus, as well as the still-living Saiga antelope. Like modern rhinos, these enormous animals were likely mostly solitary, and may have been relatively rare components of the ecosystem. This, in combination with the slow rate of reproduction, would have made the genus relatively vulnerable to environmental stresses. While it was once thought that Elasmotherium sibiricum died out roughly 200,000 years ago, more recent evidence suggests that it survived on the southern edge of the mammoth steppe until at least 39,000 years ago, well into the last glacial maximum. Although this genus would have lived alongside Neanderthals and possibly Denisovans, there is currently no evidence that Elasmotherium was hunted by humans with this giant rhino probably succumbing to climate change and habitat disruption. A combination of its huge size, specialized niche, and specific habitat requirements would have made it difficult to bounce back, dooming this impressive beast to extinction. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm going to be taking a break over the Christmas period, so there won't be a video next Sunday, but I will be back in the new year. So until then, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or whatever it is that you celebrate, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.